Testing via the proof test method, whether it be a DOT rated cylinder or a non-DOT rated cylinder, you must have a test pump. And for DOT rated cylinders, you must have a dual gauge assembly. One gauge is the working gauge, and one ga gauge works as a referee gauge. The referee gauge's sole purpose is to verify the accuracy of the working gauge once a day. HydroTest Products has produced a calibration verification sheet for proof testing, as well as a retest data sheet for proof testing. Keeping in mind that if you are retesting DOT rated fire extinguishers, for example, this cylinder is a dry chemical cylinder that is DOT rated. You can see that it's a DOT 4B195. That specification 4B will tell you that you're going to test that to twice that service pressure. You must have in-house calibrated gauges accurate to a readability of 1% at the test pressures. The test pump that most already have is okay to use as long as you understand that these pumps were really not designed to hold pressure as accurately as DOT is now requiring. Therefore, you may have to put an outlet check valve as a separate item on your outlet line. The dual gauge panel assembly is easily put onto your existing pump. There is a four foot long high pressure hose that comes down with a quarter inch and a quick coupler and that can be put into exactly where your existing gauge used to be. The proper verification procedure is that you have to verify the accuracy to within 10% of whatever you're testing that day to an accuracy of 1%. For this demonstration, I will be going to 200 PSI, 300 PSI, and 400 PSI. And what I will be doing is bringing up the pressure on the referee gauge and then verifying that the working gauge is within 1% of what the referee gauge is telling me. We have to open up our isolation valve. This allows both gauges to operate at the same time. Turn on our water supply. And looking at the referee gauge, we start pumping. And when the pressure reaches 200 PSI, we stop. Look at the working gauge. And the working gauge is right at 200. We then proceed to 300. Referee gauge at 300. And the working gauge is actually at 302. We'll then proceed to 400. And with the referee gauge at 400, the working gauge is actually at 402. You can then shut off the isolation valve and relieve the pressure. Now since we did have a deviation, we have to do some math and find out whether or not we're within 1%. At 200 PSI, on the referee gauge, our working gauge was exactly 200 PSI. We had 0% deviation. When we went to 300 on the referee gauge, our working gauge actually read 302. That gives us a total of 0.66% deviation, well within the 1%. At 400 PSI, our working gauge actually read 402, and that is within 0.5%, again, well within the 1%. The math is fairly easy. You take the larger number minus the smaller number and divide it by what you should have been at and then times it by 100 to express as a percentage. There is an example down at the end of the sheet. The gauges themselves, the working gauge, must be recalibrated once every six months, just like a high pressure system. And the referee gauge, after a six month use, can be then brought over is a working gauge for an additional six months and in itself then be recalibrated within a six month period. If in place of the referee gauge went with what is called a master gauge, which is a gauge that has better accuracy than the working gauge, that would need to be recalibrated once every 12 months. The working gauge would have to be recalibrated still at a six month interval. 
Regardless whether it's a DOT or non-DOT spec cylinder, NFPA 10 has come out and said that you must have a calibrated gauge for testing fire extinguisher shells. If you're testing propane cylinders via the proof test method, you must have this set up because those are all DOT rated cylinders.